to another episode of Gamer Zero. I'm your host T Heel. So I told you this episode was coming and it's kind of probably going to shake some people up and make you think a little bit because the title, I'm sure you've seen it by now, it's all about Call of Duty and falling this holiday season. And you're probably thinking, what do you mean fall? I'm talking fall, fail, not do the big splash that Call of Duty does. And I pose this question out there and I want, this is really, you know, something I've been noticing and I wonder if you guys are picking up on it too is that Call of Duty has always been Activision's 400 pound gorilla in the room and everyone avoids them, avoids them. Uh, they push their titles out, even if they're AAA, they push them out to avoid this title. But I think this is the first time that Call of Duty and Activision's brand has been weak, weak and people know it. I'm not saying that it's not gonna do like good numbers, but the way I'm seeing it is everyone's just well, let me set it up for you. So, for the first time, you don't have the real Infinity Ward, not what's left, um, and you don't have Treyarch producing your Call of Duty for the holiday season. What you have is Sledgehammer Studios getting assistance from what's left of the Infinity Ward team and Raven Software. So, all three of them are going in, and why would you say that they're getting all the support for this holiday season? And I think Bobby Kotick has realized that the competitors, which are a plenty, realize this. And not one of them's trying to, these competitors is trying to take them out by themselves. It's like almost like an unspoken conglomerate that's after the Call of Duty franchise. And if they figure, if they break them now, they break them for good. And you're probably thinking, ah, Call of Duty is like the biggest title. And, it, you know, it does, what, 14, 15, 17 million units. Um... And typically, yeah, but you have proven developers, and they've never really had strong, stiff competition. Maybe one or two games coming after that time frame. So there's always been plenty of money to go around. I don't see that happening this holiday season, and here's why. You've got Uncharted 3 dropping in that time frame. You've got Gears of War 3 dropping in that time frame. You've got Mass Effect 3 dropping in that time frame. You've got Crisis. Two dropping in that frame time frame. Um, there are a lot of I, I'm not I don't want to confirm this and because I don't know for 100 percent sure, but we're hearing buzz that rage is coming out in that time frame, and you you think it right there. So infamous two potentially is coming out in that time frame. Twisted metal is coming out in that time frame. I mean these are some big titles, some big big titles, and going right in that time frame. And I'm I stop to think myself. It's like when was the last time? Like, I mean, you get some good titles, some AAA titles, some A titles, but never this many stellar titles. And when mom and dad are asking their kids what games they want, these are all good games that their kids know about. And I think this is the one time that each one of them has this mindset to just chip away, just, just steal a little bit of the sales from them, steal a little bit of the sales. And all of these different really strong uh, ex uh, strong titles competing for that time frame. Can Call of Duty really just beat them all back with a baseball bat? Do you really think that? I mean, this isn't Infinity Ward, and this isn't uh, this isn't Treyarch. This is not one of them. This is an un I wouldn't say unknown, but an untested Call of Duty developer. I mean, they've got some support. They've got a lot of support, and I think we're seeing that from Activision because they know that if these developers and these publishers hit them really, really hit hit Activision that hard that this is the one turning point in their domain. And you see this in other big companies and other big industries where the moment a big company gets soft, all of the little all the smaller competitors pretty much rush in and hit them, hit them hard. 
And I think that's what we're seeing. And I personally feel that after this holiday season, and I could be wrong, uh, unless their marketing ca- campaign is like insane, the money that um, Bobby uh, Kotick would have to throw at this to make it seem like there's not even another game on the market. And this is not just Sony or third party. This is Microsoft too. Uh, they've got to really shine this holiday season. Because if they don't, then it really continues that stranglehold for all that money that Call of Duty would have. And you're telling me, you can say they have the greatest partnership with Activision all they want, but Microsoft wants more of that money. They're a company. They want to get more. It's part of what they do. Sony's going to want to get more. Nintendo's going to want to get more. All these third-party um, publishers are going to want to get more. And they're, they've all dodged them, but it's always because they've known they're going up against the beast and i think this is the first time the beast is wounded and everyone smells the blood so let me know what you think i I personally think this is the this is going to be the straw that broke the camel's back i mean you're not going to see a treyarch um, game until maybe next year Uh, so i want to hear what you guys think short little convo piece i personally think it's a wraps and you hear stuff like futuristic uh call of duty that could do well might not i mean there's rumors that War, uh, the new Starhawk game is going to come around that time. We don't know, but what's been confirmed for that time frame, there are so many, and I'm only getting some of them. I mean, people are talking about The Last Guardian, uh, just so many games that are going to be beating down that time frame. Can Call of Duty beat them back? I don't think it's a strong enough title. Not with all the stiff competition. There's some great games, not even great games, unbelievable games coming at them. And I think it's a wrap. I think this is going to be... They probably won't do no 14, 15 million. They'll probably do like maybe six. Three, three, three on each console. Maybe maybe eight. Four, four. But that's nothing like the, what they're used to. It's nothing like they're used to. And with all the games that they see going into 2012, it's going to be hard for them to just recoup those losses at a later date because people know it's that first week sales, that first month sales. You don't do great. You don't do your normal numbers on your uh, first month. Investors start going, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on here? So let me know what you think. That's all I had for this episode. You can follow me on hiphopgamershow.com. On Twitter, it's T underscore Hill Zero. Or if you want, you can hit me up on PSN. It's T dash Hill. All right. I just want to give my shout outs to, you know, as always, to Hip Hop Gamer. Um, that but Blackbuster Critic. What a joke. What a joke. And I just want to say thank you to uh, Hitman. Keep doing your thing. Um, I really appreciate your support and can't wait to get the convo in. Uh, Night Gen, as always, almost like a brother from another mother. Um, but I can't wait to get it in with the convo piece. Hopefully we do our little three-way convo and uh, get it cracking. All right? That's all I've got. Hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, leave your comments below, send me messages, and I'll continue dropping out some fire. All right. I'm out. Peace.